new MacBooks, new displays for new MacBooks, the VR headset, the Mac Pro with Apple Silicon. Holy crap, guys, there is a lot of stuff going on. I, I just had to film a news video. I don't film these too often, but there has been a ton of stuff over the past week, which you would not expect given that it is mid-January. Usually there's nothing going on now, but not this time. So let's dive straight in. So of course we gotta start things off with news from Mark Gurman who has laid out this wide slate of MacBooks to expect this year. So we're looking at a 15 inch MacBook Air on track for 2023 as well as new 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros with M2 Pro and M2 Max. Now this is an interesting topic because the M2 Pro and the M2 Max MacBook Pros I don't think we're really expecting anything super major out of them. We've talked in the past about the new GPUs and CPUs that Apple is coming out with, which include revised core counts. So we could be going from 10 to 12 CPU cores and up to, I think, 36 or 40 GPU cores. So that's definitely going to be interesting. But what's really interesting is those were rumored for late last year, and then obviously that didn't happen. So. It stands to reason that these new MacBook Pros with the M2 chips could launch really, really soon, like before even a March event. Because I mean, look at the other stuff that's planned for the March event. We've got the AR VR headset, which is supposedly going to have a whole host of features that we're going to get into in just a second. And we've also got a new Mac Pro. Just recently, Mark Gurman is saying that a new version of the Mac Pro is running Mac OS 13.3. That is really critical because Mac OS 13.3 is most likely going to come out somewhere around March. So it seems like we might have a March event with the AR VR headset and a new Mac Pro. Holy cow. Wow, that's a lot of stuff. So where do we even start? Well, let's start on the lower end of the spectrum, the MacBook Air. According to German, Apple is now finalizing their plans for the MacBook Air, and unfortunately, a 12-inch MacBook Air that they had been working on is pushed back. However, a 15-inch MacBook Air is pretty much definitely on track for this year. And I mean, you guys know that I'm a big fan of that. Now there's not a ton of info on timing, so I wouldn't necessarily get your hopes up for a 15 inch MacBook Air before June, but given that supposedly this could be an M2 product, that might mean that it's sooner than later. Next up, we've got the 14 inch and 16 inch M2 Pro and M2 Max MacBook Pros. As we discussed, those are probably gonna be coming very, very soon. I wouldn't expect much more than a chip upgrade if you already have the 2021 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros, I don't think you're going to need to upgrade, but of course, if you want coverage, benchmarks, and usability testing for these devices, hit the subscribe button, you know where to find it. So while those are the more imminent rumors for the MacBook this year, there are some interesting things that have been coming out over the last couple of days, including a new MacBook with an OLED display that could come as early as next year. That is really interesting. Ming-Chi Kuo, who is very respectable for years and years and years, has said that Apple wants to start moving from LCD and mini LED to OLED displays. And this is in conjunction with a rumor that said that a future version of the Apple Watch Ultra in 2025 could feature a micro LED display. So honestly, I'm pretty stoked for that. And this is also paired with further reporting from Ross Young, who says that a MacBook Air with an OLED display could come next year, as well as new 11.1 and 13 inch iPad Pros also with OLED displays next year. That would be really, really interesting. And if Apple moved over to an entirely OLED based ProMotion ecosystem, oh, amazing. And you know what else would make those display rumors a little bit more juicy? Well, apparently, take this with a grain of salt, but apparently Apple could be working on touchscreen Macs. And this is coming from Mark Gurman. This is not some sketchy person on Twitter, right? This is a new MacBook Pro with OLED with a touch screen in 2025. Now, German is saying that they're actively engaged in the project, so that is really a little bit more of an experimental phase, 
we're not talking about production validation testing on, on OLED touchscreens happening yet. This is a little ways down the line. But also, according to Mark Gurman, what might not be down the line is a new M2 Mac Pro. This is where things get really, really interesting for this spring because this Mac Pro, as mentioned earlier, is running macOS 13.3. German is also saying that the new Mac Pro is expected to feature M2 Ultra chip, but a higher end M2 Extreme was reportedly canceled. And this is pretty weird because obviously the Ultra already exists in the Mac Studio. So how does a Mac Studio coexist with this Mac Pro that Mark Gurman says is gonna have the same design as the current one. That's a little bit weird, right? Because the current Mac Pro is enormous, and for good reason. It has a ton of expansion slots. You can put all sorts of RAM in it. You can even replace the CPU if you want. You can put in GPUs, MPX module storage, anything that you can think of. But the M1 Ultra, or the M2 Ultra, is an SoC. The RAM, the CPU, the GPU, it's all built into this package. So what would the rest of that space be for? Is Apple working on some other type of first party unique expansion capabilities? It certainly doesn't need all that space for cooling. The Mac Studio has proved that a tiny little box the size of a power supply is plenty for keeping an M1 Ultra under control. So this is going to be a very, very curious puzzle to solve. And another puzzle that we might be getting a little closer to solving is that of the VR headset, because we're finally staring down the barrel of this guy. It has been a long time rumored, but it's now getting more and more concrete to the point that I think it's actually imminent. The information released a pretty interesting batch of new details, including this massive list of features a waste-mounted battery connected via a MagSafe-like power cable, a design that incorporates aluminum glass and carbon fiber, a small digital crown-like dial, different headbands including ones with built-in speakers, magnetically attachable prescription lenses, motors to adjust internal lenses, 120-degree field of view, H2 chip for low latency connection, main SOCs, as well as a dedicated image signal processor, and the ability to run existing iOS apps in 2D. Holy crap, go back and pause on that if you need more time, because wow, that is a lot of very detailed information. I mean, I guess it makes sense, they are called the information. But if you're like me, your first thought after reading all of that is, Holy crap, this thing is going to be expensive. We've previously heard $29.99. After reading that list and knowing Apple, I think you could probably add another nine on the end of that. Just kidding, but maybe like five, six grand. I mean, wow, that is a lot. And I've previously discussed that the displays Apple has been testing could have two or 3,000 PPI. That is incredible pixel density, unlike anything that you will find in any existing VR headset. So this is not going to come cheap. And it's probably also going to have some of those first gen product things. But could we be looking at an iPhone level catalyst here? Maybe. Could Apple be the company that takes VR and AR to the mainstream, broadens it up beyond, well, this? Well, I certainly hope so, because I don't want to see Apple go down that road. But one thing is for sure. There is a lot to look forward to, and we're not even getting to WWDC yet. Like, everything that I've just talked about, 15-inch MacBook Air, new 14 and 16-inch MacBook Pros, a Mac Pro, the VR headset we've been waiting years for, all of that could come in the next two to three months. What? When are, since when are January's, since when are January's news cycle months? I'm in South Korea, look, look. I'm not, I'm not prepared for this. I'm in a hotel room, guys. This is just ridiculous. What is, Apple, Tim, what are you doing? I was not ready for any of this. Uh, but anyway, 
thank you guys for watching this video. Uh, I'm gonna go edit this, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!